though we've rescued Cray, and it's time to bring him back to his mother to see... Whatever it is, she happened to ask, say. First you gotta go- oh wait, no, we're already there. Was Ryu the only one to sleep in the tent? Always seems that way. Hmm. Never says anything. <laughs> okay, there you are. No, oh, thanks. There's nothing about normal about you either. Just thinking of this? So finally, we finally seem to have something which has pushed the character of Ryu to the forefront of the story. Up until this point, he seems to have always just kind of been someone who existed in the story, someone whom the story is something that they're just viewing the game from the perspective of. Sort of like how in uh, Final Fantasy XII, you had the character of Vaughn, your main character, or your, the character you play as, but he's not really important to the story in any significant way. He was more or less just the character that you viewed everything that went on from the perspective of. In this case, 
Ryu seemed to have been somebody that, like, oh, well, he, he's here, but really it's Nina's story. And for the last little bit, it's been Cray's story. Nina looking for her sister. Cray trying to... Well, being kidnapped, essentially, because the Empire is looking for some demands about uh, taking land from his people. But... Cray was, uh, Cray, jeez. <laughs> Ryu was there, but wasn't really important to the story at all. And then you had this Folu character who was, he haven't spent a lot of time playing as, but we spent a little bit of time playing as, who seemed to be, he was dealing with the Empire people on his own front, but was rather disconnected from everything else that was going on. But, of course, since he's clearly, like, some kind of major antagonist, or a secondary antagonist, or something like that. Fighting against the Empire as well, however. There is clearly some kind of connection between him and Ryu, because they're both Dragon Clan. But Ryu has just sort of been around. This mysterious character isn't aware of his own past, apparently. I don't know, he's a mute character, so... Who knows what the hell he knows. But now we're starting to get the hint that maybe he is actually important to the story. Of course, the Empire obviously would have some interest in him being a, a dragon, the same as Folo is. But it hasn't been exactly clear what they want him for, or what they... I don't know, what his connection to Folu is. I don't, I don't know what that connection is, other than both being Dragon Clan. But we finally have... Ryu showing some measure of importance to the story. Now, I guess in Breath of Fire 3, you kind of had something sort of similar to this. So, in Breath of Fire 3, you started out as... Um, you had the beginning sequence where a young dragon woke up in the mines and went around on a rampage. And then you had um, this section where... It, he ends up getting lost in the woods and picked up by two other children who are thieves in a town. At which point, Ryu just sort of gets swept up in the story of these other two kids living in this town, trying to eke out a living being uh, little thieves and all that. And he doesn't really have anything to say in the story. Of course, he doesn't have anything to say at all. He's a mute character, but... He doesn't influence the story in any way. It's all what Tipu and Ri are doing. And he's just sort of along for the ride. Then Tipu and Ri get beaten, and he uh, he essentially has to pick up the uh, carry forward, looking for the two of them. Sort of gets on Tipu's trail and follows him around, but he's still just sort of like, oh, I gotta find my friends. But that doesn't last very long, and he gets swept up in this story of Bilo and Sunder trying to kidnap Princess Nina. And he's trying to protect Nina, not necessarily trying to find his friends, but he gets caught trying to protect Nina. Eventually, though, another character goes and discovers him and then lets him know about his dragon legacy. And at that point, the story becomes about Ryu. With the, um... The story doesn't become about Ryu until it discovers, like, oh yeah, he's a, he's a member of the Dragon Clan, he's important, and, like, you need to come with me to this uh, Angel Tower so we can get to the bottom of this kind of thing. And that's when the story becomes about Ryu. Before then... He's just sort of along for the ride, and eventually the story shifts to him. Breath of Fire 2. I mean, that was... Doesn't really have the same kind of changes. It's an earlier game, so the storytelling is a little bit some more simplistic. Not that the Breath of Fire games are terribly complex. But the... Um, Breath of Fire 2. It's been a long time since I played that one. I should give that one a run-through on this channel if I can ever remember to. Yeah, I mean, the story was influenced by him from the beginning, because it was... You're, of course, you're always playing as him, and 
he goes off into the woods to find his sister or something, and then he comes back and nobody can remember him. So, he's of course getting caught up in the larger larger story, you know, with Nina and and all the other characters. But, the fact that he has this weird little, like, uh, everybody forgot who he is thing, and he's a dragon and all that kind of stuff... I don't know. It's not as complicated of a story, of course. SNES RPGs generally weren't. It's it's a hard. I don't think that's a good idea to really compare. Oh look, we have another dungeon. Alright, go ahead. <laughs> Look at that, though. <laughs> Please. <laughs> that animation just doesn't fit. It was funny. Him holding uh, his hand up to his head like he was trying to block the sun. Alright, so another dungeon. I even saw it was here, and I still didn't. This ability for Nina to fly into the sky, to scope out the area, is so useful. It's almost like, um... The game wants you to just play as Nina all the time. Not only did they give her this tremendously useful field ability, she's actually pretty damn good in combat. She's primarily, uh, like a mage character, of course, but she can do at least a respectable amount of damage, which is something that the uh, Breath of Fire 2 and 3 Ninas weren't really able to do. Th these games are sort of like um, The Legend of Zelda in a certain sense, where they have the same characters in a sense. They have, like, there's always a Link and there's always a Zelda, but they're not necessarily always the same Link or Zelda in every Legend of Zelda game. And eventually, Nintendo ended up making some weird tenuous connection between the different games where... Okay, so, this one can't happen before this one, but they're hundreds of years apart, and they're not really the same people, they just have the same names and they fill the same role. It's, it's stupid. Um... I think they tried doing something like this. Like, I think Breath of Fire 1, 2, and 3... ...take place in... ...or 1, 2, 3, and 4. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But a lot of these are supposed to take place within the same timeline, but hundreds of years apart, so... You know, I don't know. Maybe 4 doesn't fit in that timeline. And you're not... Okay, so you need Cray to move these lights. And... Okay, so Ryu can't do it? Nope, he can't do it. But anyway, you have these different uh, games where the similarly named or same names were used for characters. But they're not the same people. And... Um, but they fill, oftentimes fill similar roles in the stories. And all of that. Can't push it, bro. It's already turned. <laughs> so there's only really three Breath of Fire games I've played. There's this one, there's Breath of Fire 2, and there's Breath of Fire 3. Two I haven't played in a long time. Three I've played for this channel. So it's, it's hard for me to rank. Like, so of the reoccurring characters, you pretty much always have a Nina and you always have a Ryu. Ryu isn't really a character so much. He's a mute character. He just is along. He's there. So they never say or act or do anything like that. That's a treasure chest. Nina, however, is in all of these games. I'd have to say as far as, like, the power... the This Nina is probably the most powerful one. Because Breath of Fire 2 Nina was 
a good mage, but she was weak in terms of physical power. But she had the ability that you could give her like an instant kill attack, which made her supremely powerful. But if you didn't know how to do that and you didn't give it to her, she'd remain eh, a so-so character. Breath of Fire 3's Nina was... Um, she wasn't balanced very well and she was balanced too much on the weak side. F weak physical attack, weak uh, defense, and all of that kind of stuff. But... Um, decent magic, but magic wasn't especially useful in that game and had certain disadvantages. This Nina, on the other hand, seems to be balanced more on the strong side. She's a good mage, but she can also do at least a decent physical attack. So this one's probably the most powerful of Nina's. I think the Breath of Fire 3 character is probably my favorite, though, because she was... she actually had a decent character arc to her.